Hello. So today we're carrying on with our work on the driving question, how do I make 2D representations of 3D objects? And we're going to start with a quick recap of what we did last lesson. So on the screen in front of you, you can see four shapes. And what you're asked to do is to write down the number of faces, the number of vertices, and the number of edges for each one. As you can see, one has already been done, just to give you a little bit of a help. And so I'd just like you now to get ready to turn the video off and be ready to start your work. By the way, today you are going to need a ruler and some paper to do accurate drawings on. If you've got squared paper, now would be a really good time to use it. So if you've got some squared paper and you need a ruler, before you start doing this work, take some time to get that equipment ready. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now to give you a chance to get on with your work. When, I, when you turn it back on, I'll be going through the answers. When I went through this, when I started to go through this work, I realized perhaps not many of you had actually seen a triangle-based pyramid. So I've brought one. As you can see, this is a shape that has a triangle on each face. It's got four sides, as we can see. One, two, three, and one on the bottom makes four. And all of them are triangular. That's what a triangular base pyramid actually looks like. So, how many faces has it got? Well, as I've just said and showed you, it's got four faces. How many vertices has it got? As I said, it's got four vertices, or if we bring it back, you can see it's got four vertices, one on the top, three on the bottom. And finally, how many edges? Well, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. So, six edges. I think that's the hardest shape for you to envisage at the moment or to visualize. The next one, the triangular prism. How many faces? Well, it's got a triangle on each end and three rectangles for a total of five. How many vertices? Well, it's got three each end for a total of six. And how many edges? Well, it's got three on the front, three on the back, and three around the sides for a total of nine. And the square base pyramid, how many faces? It's got four triangles and a square for a total of five. Same as the triangular prism. How many vertices? Well, there's four on the bottom and then one on the top for a total of five. And how many edges? Well, there's one between each triangular face for a total of four and four on the bottom. So four out of four makes eight. So that is what your table should look like. If it doesn't, don't worry. Stop, play the tape back, go through the bit that you didn't really, that, that perhaps you got wrong, and then be ready to move on. I'll pause for a few seconds to give you a chance to stop, go back, and then come back to me. Thank you. Okay, so I'm actually going to 
go back onto my screen for this one. So the key point, the plan, this is a way of drawing a shape. This is a way of drawing shapes. So the plan is the view from above the object. The front elevation is the view in front of the object. And the side elevation is the view from the side of the object. So to help you, I've just got a small cuboid. Well, it's a rubber, but it's a cuboid for the purposes of this. As you can see, if we look straight down on that cuboid, even though it's a three dimensional shape, you saw it as I was putting it down, all you can see is one face. You can only see the rectangle that's the top. So when you're drawing a plan of something, you don't have to worry about what's going on on the sides unless they stick out beyond the shape. You don't try and draw this and try and show that there's any depth to it. So a plan just shows what it looks like looking straight down. Now imagine that I'm going to turn, I take my visualizer down, and so I'm looking at this object this way. Okay? Now I can't really do that, so I'm just going to turn it and look down on it. That's better if I put my hand. If I put something there, it's a little bit better shaded and you see the definition of it a little bit better. As you can see, again, if I look straight at the front of this object, all I can see is a rectangle. I can't see anything else. So again, a front, a front elevation view just shows what you can see from the front. You don't have to worry about what's behind. Now, obviously, if there was a bit chopped out of that corner, I would be able to see what carried on but all I can see from this is just that rectangle and similarly if I look at it from this way the side all I'm going to see just position that properly there you go all I'm going to see is the side of the shape I'm not going to see anything else so when we're drawing plans and elevations we don't have to worry about trying to draw anything other than the side that we can see okay so these are very very simple in this case if i was to draw this shape to draw the plan i would draw a rectangle and nothing else if i was drawing the front i would draw a rectangle and nothing else and similarly if i was going to draw the side i would be drawing a rectangle and nothing else now each rectangle is different but they're all still just rectangles again if you're a little bit unsure just stop, run the tape back and watch it again and, see, and make certain that you understand because a lot of the work we're going to be doing from now on today is based on this concept. Okay, so here we've got that shown again on drawings. Draw the plan, the front elevation, and the side elevation of this cuboid on cube paper. Use a ruler, measure accurately, label the lens. So, as we just said, when we look down on that shape, we get the plan view, which is a rectangle five centimeters long by three centimeters high. If we look at the front, We also see a rectangle. It's also five centimeters long, and this is two centimeters high. And lastly, when we look at the side, we see another rectangle, which is three centimeters long and two centimeters wide. So in each case, we end up with a rectangle, which is much, e it's much easier to draw three rectangles than it is to try and draw the shape that's actually there. And it's very, very clear what we have to do. That's what I want you to be doing in the next two activities. We're going to be drawing plans, front elevations and side elevations. Do we all understand? If you're not quite certain, possibly best to run back the last two slides and have another look. I'll pause for a few seconds and then you can start your work. Okay, here we go. It's your turn. So 
So what we're going to be drawing here are those three views, plan, front elevation, side elevation for each of those cubes, those cuboids, sorry. Much, much easier on square paper. I haven't got square paper. So if you haven't, it doesn't really matter. You just need to be a little bit more accurate with your work. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. You're going to get on with this and I will see you to show you how I did it in a few minutes. Have fun. Okay, so time to do a little bit of drawing. I'm gonna move everything over a little bit on my desk for a second so that I can actually have a bit more room to do some drawing, a bit more working space there. So for my first shape, I have a cuboid and I'm going to be drawing the plan, front elevation and the side elevation. So the front, so the plan is looking down on the top. And what I've got, if I look down on the top, is a rectangle of sides of six, meet, six centimeters long by four centimeters wide or high. So that's the first thing I'm going to draw. So the first thing I do is I draw a line six centimeters long, measure four centimeters down. Oh, that's handy, it's on a line. Measure four centimeters down from the other end. Join them together. I'm going to label that plan. And I'm going to label each of my sides. Now I'm just going to draw little arrows, little lines to write my dimensions on because we're going to do this properly and neatly. So using the ruler all the time, I draw lines like this. Now if you haven't done this and put the dimensions on, it's probably a good idea to go back and do that and just get in the habit of trying to draw as accurately and as neatly as you can. It makes everything a lot easier. So there's my plan. This side is six centimeters. This side is four centimeters. The front elevation is also six centimeters long because obviously I'm looking at the shape from here, looking at this way. So it's also going to be six centimeters long. But all I can now see is the height, and the height, as we know, is one centimeter.
So this is the front elevation, not the front. Remember the front elevation. Not the plan elevation, but it is the front elevation. And again, that's going to be six centimeters. And the height of this cuboid is one centimeter. And that leaves me, lastly, the side elevation, looking at it this way. And that's going to be four centimeters by one centimeter high. So this is the smallest one of them all. I haven't got enough room to get the, it in, so it's going to be down here. So in some ways it's really in the wrong place, but never mind. That's going to be the side elevation. Now, that's going to be four centimeters, and that's going to be one centimeter. Okay. Now I realize that it's going to be quite boring watching me go through that process another twice. But I think it's really important that you've seen that once. What I would like you to do now is go through yours and make certain that they're all done like that, that you have measured correctly. You have drawn a line with arrows and everything is done correctly. If it is fantastic, if it's not, just change yours a little bit. Make certain that they all look exactly the same. I mean, the dimensions are pretty easy to work out. They're already written down. So I don't really think there's a lot of point in doing any me doing that over and over again whilst you're watching me. So for now, go back and check your other two. You should have a front elevator. Let me just run through the dimensions for two. Perhaps that's the best way of doing it. Or for B your plan yes your plan should be eight centimeters by two centimeters your front elevation should be eight centimeters by four centimeters and your side elevation should be two centimeters by four centimeters. So those are the sizes that you should have drawn, rectangles that you should have drawn. And for C, your plan should be three centimeters by three centimeters. Your front should be three centimeters by five centimeters. And your side, your front elevation, sorry, because you should write elevation. And your side elevation Should also be three centimeters by five centimeters. So we should have three sets of three diagrams. 
very important that we get that done. Okay, I'll pause talking now to give you a chance to go back, check your work, make certain everything has been done correctly in the way I've done part A up there. And once you've done that, we'll get on with the rest. Okay, for this next question, we are looking at some shapes, or the plan, the plan of some shapes. And then trying to decide from the plan what those shapes could be. Notice I'm saying could be. There are some of them where it's possible to be one, but could be more than one. So stop, have a think, and write down the name of what you think each shape should be. I'm going to stop now. Restart when you're finished. Okay. So for this question, here are the plan views of some 3D solids. What solid could each one be? Well, A, we're looking down, we can see a square. So one shape it could obviously be, a shape that's made up of squares or has faces that are squares, is a cube. Also, for this one, it could also be a cuboid because the if we look, if we saw it from planned elevation, uh, sorry, if we saw it from the front or the side, we might find that the sides are actually rectangles, not not squares. So this could be a cube or a cuboid. So long as you've got one of those written down or both, you've got it right. B, we're looking down and we can see a circle. The obvious one that that could be is a sphere. If you've written down ball, please change it to sphere. Another shape that it could be is a cylinder. Have a look down on a tin of tomato soup or beans and you'll see that that's what you'll see if you look straight down at the plan view. So that could be a sphere or a cylinder. See, definitely could be one of those. Yes? Because that's what we would see. Let me try and position this. There you go. So that's exactly what you would see if you look down on it. So it could be a triangle based pyramid. Let me try. I've done it now. Triangle based. Or a triangular based pyramid, triangle based pyramid. It could even be two of them back to back put together, but we won't think about that for now. So we're going to call that one a triangle based pyramid. And D could be a square based pyramid. But also, it could be one of these. If I look straight down on that, I can see. Oops, my pen's in the way. Oh dear, that was silly. We can see that what we've got is the shape that we were looking at. However, this is actually two of them put together. So you've actually got a shape. 
an eight sided shape that's made up of triangles, which is an octahedron. So, an octahedron. Don't worry if you haven't got that one. Or this one could be the same, but it could be what we call a hexahedron. Don't worry about those. We should really have got, but you should have one, or you should have either of those, either of those, triangle-based pyramid or a square-based pyramid. If you haven't got those, don't worry about the octahedron. Don't Please make certain that you understand why it's those shapes. Pause for a second, and then we'll carry on. Okay, now some of you will recognize part of this question from the question that we've already started, that we did at the start of the lesson. We're going back to our table. So there is no need for you to do anything, there's no need for you to completely redo the table. You can use the table that you've already done. So you don't have to worry about A, all you have to do is concentrate on B, C, D, and E. So stop the tape. Make certain that you understand the instructions. And when you and when you've finished, when you've answered all the questions, I know some of them are going to involve a bit of thinking. So don't do take your time. Don't worry. It doesn't have to be done in a rush. When you've done that, turn it, turn the tape back on, and we'll go through how I did them. Okay. So here's my table. Here's one that we prepared earlier. Fortunately, I left a bit of a gap. Obviously, if you haven't, it doesn't really matter. You you know, you can manage this. So the first thing that it asks us to do, hold on, let me just try and make that a bit bigger. See if that helps a little bit. Right. Okay. I'm going to make that a lot bigger. There, then when I bring that up, yeah, that's okay. You can still see it. So include a new row in the table to show faces plus vertices. So down here, I'm not going to write faces plus vertices. I'm just going to write F plus V. Six, add eight, is 14. Four, add four, is eight. Five, add six, is 11. Five, add five, is 10. Compare your answer in the new row with the number of edges. What do you notice? Well, I've got 12 and 14, 6 and 8, 9 and 11, 8 and 10. Well, if we look at that pretty quickly, we can see that faces plus vertices is 2 more than edges. We're all happy with that. Can we all see that? 12 add 2 is 14. 6 add 8 is 6 add 2 is 8. 9 add 2 is 11. 8 add 2 is 10. Or 14 take away 2 is 12 and so on. Write down a rule using words or algebra to divide the relationship, or oh, sorry, to describe the relationship between the number of faces, edges and vertices in a 3D solid. Okay, 
I've sort of done that already in my words. So I'm going to try and write that in algebra. So I'm going to use F and V again. So F plus V, the faces and the vertices, is what? It's two more than the edges. So however many edge whatever however many edges I've got, I need to add two. So I'm going to call edges E. So I get E plus two. Is that okay? Now I'm going to change that a little bit because I want it in such a way as I've just got E by itself. So what have I got to do to the number of faces and vertices to make it the same as the number of edges? I've got to take two away. So I could also write that as F plus V take away two. So faces plus vertices, 14, take away two, that's 12, is the number of edges. If that doesn't, if you're not 100% clear with that, stop for a minute, run back through the tape, make certain that we understand where we're going. I'll pause for a second so that when you come back, you won't have missed anything. Okay, so let's check it with our um, with our six with our hexagonal prism. So I need the number of faces. So this is part D. Run out of a bit of room. So the number of faces. The number of vertices and the number of edges. So, the number of faces, I've got one at each end plus six around the side for eight. The number of vertices, I've got six each end for 12. So if I use my formula now, eight plus 12 is 20 take away 2 is 18. So the number of edges that I'm looking for is 18. I've written that in pencil just in case I've got it wrong. So if I look at my shape, I've got on each end, I've got six edges. So two lots of six is 12. And then around the middle, I've got the six long edges. Well, 12 add six is 18. So yes, as my formula suggested, I have 18 vertices. Okay, I'm going to turn over the page here to do the last one because this page is getting a little bit full now. So challenge part D, let's have a think. So let's think about those two shapes we've got. A sphere and a cylinder. Faces, vertices, edges. Faces, vertices, edges. Well, how many faces has, has a sphere got? 
Well, it's all one face, really, isn't it? This is getting back to, as we talked about in the last lesson, if I unpeeled it, it would just be one face. So it's only got one face. It doesn't have any vertices. If my formula now I've got to do one, one plus nothing is one, take away two is minus one. That doesn't sound very right, does it? How can you have minus one edges? That That's really bad. So it doesn't really work for spheres. What about with cylinders? Well, how many faces have we got? We've got the top, the bottom, and the sides, so for three. How many vertices have we got? Well, we haven't got any. So three plus nothing is three minus two is one. And we can see by looking at the cylinder that there are actually two edges, one at the top, one at the bottom. So this rule that we've just found and tested only seems doesn't seem to work for shapes that have curved surfaces in them. So have a think about that. But this is what you had to have done to, to have explained it. Okay, so it doesn't work for shapes with curves in, because obviously you don't get three shapes meeting at vertices, because bo both of them have no vertices, and that seems to be what does it. Okay, have a stop, have a think, and then we'll move on. Okay, so this next one, again, like, just like last time we got to this point, I'm not going to give you any answers to this one. These are sort of thinking questions. We've learned a bit about nets. So have a think now <laughs> about tea bags. Now, that might seem a little strange to you to be talking about tea bags, but have a think about them. Tea bags are actually three-dimensional objects that are made from two-dimensional ones, so that the outside of them are actually nets. And this is the sort of thing that get that that people get involved in. You know, in in business, which is the best which is the best shape to use. So have a think about tea bags. How many different ways are there of making a tea bag that people use? And probably more than you think when you first start. So draw a, draw a couple of different shapes of tea bags that you've come across. Or, and I'm thinking now, if you use cold infusions in your in your water, they come in some pretty weird shapes as well. So have a look at those. Draw a couple of the nets and think about the advantages and disadvantages of using each one. There's no right answers. This is just. Um, just an excuse for you to, to, to think a little bit more about nets and when they come up in everyday life. Okay, that's Wednesday's lesson done. I'll talk to you again on Friday. Goodbye.